We have one shot to get this photo right. We've embarked on a week-long journey capturing some of the best fall photos along the eastern shores of Lake Superior. But the clock is ticking and there's one more photo left on our list. Today, there's a small 10 minute window of opportunity to capture that photo before the season ends. After traveling a total of nine hours north, past some of the most breathtaking fall views and down this dirt road, the final leg of our trip brings us to the top of this dam, which is our end destination and the final location of this photo adventure. We have one shot to get this photo right. And I think maximum, maximum like 10 minutes. I've got the 70 to 200, Jonathan's back there. Rich has run to see if he can find a photo spot. And literally for the last three days, we've been debating whether or not this photo was even worth it. Currently we're shooting with the Sault Ste. Marie tourism board and they have this one shot that's absolutely awesome. I've got this camera, I've got that camera. We've got a 360 camera. We're gonna have like three drones in the air to shoot, well, You'll see it in a minute. Did you hear something? And one more thought before I leave you, watch to the end because I'm gonna talk about the settings and some of the thought process that go into what to do when you only have one chance to get the photo correct. Like what settings do you use? What gear are we using? Because that's super, super important. All right, now to go set up. Okay, are right. you shooting vertical or horizontal? Usually I shoot vertical, but I think today I might shoot horizontal because there's an uh, interesting opportunity for me to reframe quickly. Hold I on, mean, I've got an idea. How about I shoot horizontal, you shoot vertical, Ooh. or vice versa? Two cameras? Let's do it. Two for one? Let's do this. I think we got the shot. I think we got it. Holy Good. moly. Get over here. We shot landscapes. We shot sunrise. We shot sunset. We've shot portraits. We shot astro. We shot all our shots. And I think we finally topped off this trip. And my drone, by the way, is, <laughs> is auto landing. Yeah. Yeah, I will say it's a little bit tricky when you have one chance to get the shot. I had two cameras, I had the drone, each of us had a drone and a camera, and we're like, we're like trying to dual, dual wield, triple got, wield, because we, we have the, the, the Insta360 over there. What did we learn from this? What are some, like, some important takeaways when you have one chance to get the shot? We're in a new location, prep, we had to scout, we were on photo pills, we were on Google Maps. Messaging people. Messaging locals. Literally going, does this spot look good? Is the sunset aligning? Can our car get there? One of the challenges right now, you can probably see in the video, is like the, the clouds are rolling in and out, changing ND settings, changing shutter speed, making sure the shutter is fast enough to snap the train. Yeah. I feel really good about that. <laughs> yeah, that's really Especially good. after the Scotland fail they yeah. told you guys you about right the now. Harry Potter train. I'll put that on screen so you can see my sadness. One thing that's important when you have a group of people covering different ground. Rich, you went up on yep. top of the hill I to get a slightly different perspective. And also because we're in the same area, the signal can sometimes get interference if you get too close. You and I are shooting on literally the exact same camera beside each other. And a lot of people would say, oh, like you're stealing my composition. But it's like, listen, if you have one chance to get this train, it's not coming back. And you gotta, you gotta drive two hours back to where you started. Like you wanna make sure you get it right. Sharing is caring. You shot. Horizontal, I shot vertical. And just you know, coordination. Slightly different focal, yeah. Coordinating, we were yelling at each other when the train. Knowing different elevations, what we're gonna be around. Yeah. I can show you the gear we were using really quick. 70 to 200 R5. I use the, sorry, this is R6. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> 70 to 200 R6, you know, fine, doesn't matter. The R5 was on video. The Insta360, actually, let's just flip it. So we shot on single lens for better resolution. Rich here has tried it before and noticed that you get better quality shooting one lens versus two. We don't need the back forest anyways. It shot all the frantic running around that Anthony and I did. Insert the footage now of us. 
And this here, which you probably saw, is Jonathan's camera with his iPhone to get BTS for like Instagram Reels. The camera that you're looking through uh, earlier was set up over there, and then the R6 with the 70 to 200 was set up right there. And so you were up on top, on top of the hill, so yeah. we had literally no idea what you were up to. I was shooting through trees because 135 bokeh. 135. I got a straight on shot with some elevation. At one, 1. 1.8? Yeah, 1. 1.8, might 1. as well. 8. Because this camera, I have the R5. Again, really, my one tip is you're gonna use spot, focus point, whatever it is. Are you gonna try and do wide, whatever? Try and use your newest camera if it's got that. Mine knows what a train is. Hey, Let's listen, I've got vehicle detect autofocus. Mine's okay? got car train. He's I don't trying know to flex difference. with the with the Sony train auto detection, autofocus. When you're shooting a situation where you kind of know where the train is coming from, I'm trying to eliminate as many variables as possible. So I had it on like the spot, the area around on the bridge because I knew it was going to be on the bridge. So it might be, it might be slightly out. Shutter priority mm. because I wanted to have one over, I think it's about 1500 so that it's nice and sharp and nice and fast. And honestly, at this distance, like we're maybe 400 feet away from the bridge. I don't really care if I'm at F 2.8 or F 4 because it's pretty much going to look the same. Those modes like aperture priority or shutter priority when you have rolling clouds, focus on the setting that you want to keep, keep that setting and then just let the camera do the rest. Drone wise, what's that? So we got a DJI Mini 3 Pro, nice and light, under 250 grams. Uh, what do you like about it the most? Honestly, the quality of the video and stills on this are fantastic. Huge upgrade, I went. I came from a Mini 1. It was getting a little uh, rough to use, didn't like it. Huge difference. I was on the older Air 2S, that's it right there. If it's windy, like we didn't know if it was gonna be windy, so the bigger drones are sometimes better with that. I have the Mini 3 Pro as well, thank you Tom. Our, our hidden bear in the forest, yeah. man. I do think it's funny how excited we got. I've never been more excited for a train in my life. Oh, look at this shot. So I went a little bit lower nice and like, you know, whatever. That, one of that's these, a tourism shot. like I did that's these, the I did these seven shot bursts yeah. on the drone. So I can open this one up and pick like which one I like or whatever. It seems like a wall painting. So that's probably my favorite. I did take a few it's on my camera. I think the camera shots turned out okay, but they're not, you don't see the landscape. Yeah. Cause I was in a similar position. I was a little higher and I shot vertical. You did vertical. For me, it was about showing a lot more of the railway Top and the down. whole movement. I tried to get the whole length of the train because I think it's a little tougher when you're lower to see it. Every time I've seen a train photo, you either want to capture it in a bend or you yeah. want to show because the the box cars are so interesting, like to see all the colors on the engine. Mm -hmm. I will lie for me. I kind of missed with my drone when it was on the bridge. I was more concerned with trying to set myself up in the bushes to get this kind of photo. I love that though. Did you spot focus that the yep, it knows it's on car train. Okay, so it's just so gonna it grab just the front of it. Yeah, it's 1.8. I'm laughing. Magic. Easy day for us train wannabe train spotters. That's pretty. All right. Well, we're going to go shoot a few more photos. <laughs> if you enjoy that, <laughs> we see more than we do. <laughs> we see more opportunities. Let us know if you like this video down below and uh, subscribe and all that fun stuff and go shoot photos.